haven't had a big dance like this for years. It's so heartwarming to come here and have all these people positive about your sexuality. I've come here to come back out. I'm Beck. I'm Tristan. And together we are all the Queen's men. And we just love celebrating people through creative action. We champion social equality in our work. So the Coming Back Out Ball is a great example of what we stand for as artists. The Coming Back Out Ball is a uh, spectacular social event that celebrates uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans and intersex elders, uh, people over 65. It started out of research that was revealing that LGBTI elders were going back into the closet when they were accessing aged care services. And so the ball is really um, about visibility. It's a, it's a public declaration to LGBTI elders that we see them. There has been a real deep and considered community engagement process. Really something that all the Queen's men very quickly realised is how profound the social isolation is for some of these LGBTI elders. Elders were in concert with us, talking with us, um, but making sure that uh, across the process that they were um, telling us what they needed and what they wanted to make sure that actually on the night it was their event. Uh, we have met pioneers that have you know, been at the front line pushing for rights for each of their communities. We've uh, met with people that are, have a separatist um, attitude in terms of the way that they can survive. We've met people that are only just coming out of the closet later in life, people that are transitioning uh, later in life. These are a group of people that did not have that support in terms of visibility, in terms of uh, a community rallying around them. And so to be able to uh, create something that acknowledges that has been pretty special for us. I stand before you as a young gay man to offer this night to you as a gift. A gift in appreciation and respect for all that you have done. Uh, important to note that it was free for LGBTI elders to attend, so uh, we were very conscious to make sure that it was um, equitable so that anyone could literally attend. So the event began with what we like to call our rainbow carpet arrival. We literally had hundreds of people queuing up outside the Melbourne Town Hall, getting their paparazzi photos taken. Then the doors would open and all of the guests were greeted by this beautiful sort of cavalcade of volunteers, welcoming them all very individually. So guests entered uh, the space, uh, overwhelmed by the space being dressed to the gods. And um, there was about 45 minutes of socialising. Um, and then the formal proceedings started. We were lucky enough to have Auntie Carolyn Briggs welcome us to country, uh, some formal speeches. Make this event go viral because this is a sign of hope in these times. And then Robin Archer commenced. Burned a lot, but learned a lot, and now you are broke so you earned a lot. Bewitched, bothered and bewildered, no more. Uh, we then profiled these beautiful international and national LGBTI performers uh, over the course of the night and um, guests also received a three-course meal, uh, drinks throughout the evening. We also had the amazing Carlotta as well perform. Uh, we had Deborah Cheatham. We had Jerry Connolly. I acknowledge this diverse community and pay tribute to your elders. At my age, I know what a struggle it can be to get the glad rags on. And Prince Philip has told me how stiff he gets every morning. <laughs> but that's what memories are made of. <clears throat> We had um, the Melbourne Lesbian and Gay Chorus. We had a Bespoke Orchestra, Tony Lalich, Lois Weaver, Performing Older Women's Circus, Drag Performers. 
We even managed to get a trapeze into the show. An amazing trapeze, yeah. So we actually were able to achieve something for everyone in terms of the performance. Um, and then it burst out into a social dance at the end. Um, and then we had to literally kick uh, 500 people out. So to put the Coming Back Out ball as an event together, um, really took about 18 months of really gathering the dream artistic team, pulling in all the support from our key partners. There was an amazing volunteer component where we had over 50 volunteers working here on the night to make sure that elders were greeted, supported, uh, and also um, transportation home. We also had uh, over 150 artists involved in the show, um, an amazing uh, artistic program that was directed by Cameron Menzies. We really were very lucky to be able to collaborate with the artists that were involved in the event, largely because of their generosity and goodwill for, as Tristan was saying, the social mission and heart space of the event. So we very intentionally mixed up all of our guests. So at every table, there were LGBTI elders, allies of all ages, um, but it was a very intentional thing of creating a space where new conversations can happen. I think that's also so that the LGBTI elders felt that there's a community around them and to also reveal to the LGBTI broader community, uh, introduce these amazing elders as well. Now, of course, this night wouldn't make any sense without hearing from my friends. LGBTI elders who are in this very hall. Uh, I've been around for a long time and I've seen the dark ages of lesbians and gays that were penalised, uh, charged with consorting charges, uh, anything at all, because they didn't like this. They didn't like to see hand in hand. They didn't like to see lovers. Um, yes, I came out when I was 14 and I have lived a very, very happy gay life and I, I did tell Chris, Tristan earlier that I was a bit of a, a, a fraud here because I've never been in the closet so I couldn't come out so I guess <laughs> so I guess that's it and I always say that closets are for old clothes and mothballs. What was demonstrated was that people really needed an event to come together and overwhelmingly the response was um, one deep gratitude and appreciation, and I think that people really felt seen, heard, and uh, loved. loved. Yeah, loved. I think that um, the LGBTI community are great at doing parties and great at sort of connecting through community. But I think what the Coming Back Out ball has demonstrated is that our elders also are a part of our community, and they do need to be uh, considered and, and loved, and, and, and spaces need to be created for them. I have had the best night ever. I'm just gobsmacked, really. It felt like walking into a big warm hug. You know, this is this is probably, I don't know, one of the best nights I've had for many, many years, so. I, I just, there's nothing else to compare to it, you know? Nothing else happens like this.